Hey guys, today we're, we're on the Bogus Shield River in Forks, Washington, and we're fishing for fall chinook. The fall chinook start coming in to the river in the middle of September, early October is when they really start showing up. And they're really strong through October and into early part of November. So we're kind of at the middle peak of the run. Over the next couple of weeks, we'll still have chinooks, but it'll start slowing down a little bit once you start reaching kind of the first week of November, end of the first week of November. Nice fish, a nice Chinook, caught on a float, eggs. This one's caught on a Posky's uh, fire cure. Uh, three quarters orange, quarter pink. A little bit of... Firepower in there. Yeah, it's a nice big mama fish right there. Nothing like watching a float go down. Uh oh. Uh oh, uh oh. Ooh. Right down there, that's a nice bogus eel hen chinook. Floating eggs. Got it done. Yeah, that's a nice one. The chinook fishing here can be really good. And as you'll notice today, we're float fishing, but we do a lot of casts in the spinners for them. We twitch jigs for them. We pull plugs for them if you're a quick fish guy and you want to pull that plugs and watch those good takedowns. A lot of great water here to do that with. Most of our Chinook are average right around in the 18 to 24, 25 pound range. We get quite a few fish though that are higher than that, high mid 30s. And occasionally we see a fish into the high 30s or even into the 40s. And every once in a great while, you'll see one that'll be approaching 50 or 50 plus pounds. Feeling the burn yet? Nope, shoulder burn. I've been resting the last two days. Oh, oh. You gonna net this bad boy, Mike? I'm ready. Okay. You gotta get it to me first. Remember what Bob told you, head first. Oh, okay. Thanks. Lift. All right, so we're not gonna eat this fish, so we're not gonna take it out of the water. We're just gonna let it go right away. Mike's gonna show you. Just another Chinook here on the Olympic Peninsula. Let's see what it looks like here. There it is. Big bad boy. Good night, my friend. Head back down there. We'll see you next time. Gone. Hey guys, we're doing a little bit of float fishing for these kings you've been watching us catch. And we're using a Nakoma nine and a half foot long float rod. Uh, paired with a same R reel again, same thing, size 40. This is 50 pound P-line braid. It's a one ounce. Uh, arrow jig float or arrow float, three quarter ounce weight. This is 15 pounds CXX. And we're using a three aught Eagle Claw laser sharp hook uh, with a glob of eggs. And of course the eggs we're using today are very important because we've got two different cures here. We have a, this is, this is fire cure. It's three quarters orange, quarter pink. And then this one here is a fire brine, brine, which has got fire brine. It's got borax, salt, sugar, boraxo fire, and a little bit of sodium sulfide in it in a water brine. It's really important that we have two different eggs today. The brined eggs today, even though they were getting bit, the fish weren't committing to them. And so we went to the regular fire brine, or the not fire brine, but the fire dye eggs fire cure egg, sorry. And those fish are committing to them very well. So we have both. It's really important you have both because one day you don't know what they're gonna bite. They're biting both, but one they're committing to. As the fish got and we started fishing through there and we hooked a bunch of fish, they got a little bit shy. So when they get shy, one of the things I do is I start adding scents to it. And today I brought a couple different Mike scents. I had tuna oil. Then we had anise oil, and then we got our garlic oil. And so we'll vary these scents throughout each cast, figure out what it is they want. Today, they clearly wanted the tuna oil more than anything else. We did get some bites on garlic. They didn't like anise too much today, but tuna oil was by far the best. When we put the tuna oil on, instead of getting the little peck, 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 we get a peck, peck, and the float would bury. We literally just released 
salmon that I caught. And Mike, still wet. bobber down, hand is still wet, bobber down instantly. I gotta go back to the front of the boat. Actually, bring it on over here there, Mike. I called that shot, I told you. Yeah. Set the, if I set this rod down, <laughs> it never fails. Instant, maybe Bob will get a double. It's, it's, like if you go to, if it's like if you go to pee off the side of the boat, your rod is gonna get bit. See, Bob must have been real nervous because when Bob reeled his fish in, we didn't hear a word the whole time. He just wanted to get it to the boat. But Mike here, <laughs> I think Mike here. <laughs> uh, One of us just likes to talk more yeah. than the other. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Man. He's not. Yeah, I'm corking that rod pretty good. I can see the float, but I have not seen the fish. I haven't seen him yet. I haven't got a good look at him. Starting to feel the burn a little bit. Feel the burn. <laughs> Ooh, no. No, are you serious? No. Mike literally just lost one, and two seconds later, and I'm not exaggerating, two seconds later. Let's get this straight. I didn't lose it. It came off. Oh, sorry. He didn't lose it. It came off. It was a PLDR. I call them LDRs. Yes. Long distance release. It was, no. It was a PLDR. Professional long distance release. And they smoke it right now. <laughs> no, he got off again. He got up. I'm gonna have to come out of retirement. That's called loft. Yeah, I'm I'm coming back. That's called loft. <laughs> loft. Lack of f***ing <laughs> talent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he said he's not gonna press the release button this time. He wants this one. You put the tape on the release button. That's right. It's kind of like that clam digging thing. Oh, pop it down, Bob. 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 Double. Double. Ooh, is yep. he on? Yep. We got a double. I'm gonna try to do both of these here, Bob. Okay. You know head first. Right? I do know head first. I was <laughs> trying, to just, trying to tell Mike that. Oh! oh. Dude, His head dude, was dude. there. Okay. Rookie move. Rookie move. Rookie move. Cameraman <laughs> move. California or what? That's right. Cameraman <laughs> move. We're gonna try this again. <laughs> there it is. Yeah! There's one. There's one. All right. Okay. Here we go. Just like that, we got a double. Got it. That's beautiful. A couple of good looking girls right there. Nice double, huh? Take that any day. Good way to wrap it up. Fire cure, baby. All day, every day. Oh, look at that little sunshine on them. That is a good time right there. They were flat eating the fire cure today. Man, yeah. Today you saw us catch a bunch of nice fish. Most of them are about average size, so we were catching nice Chinooks that were probably in that low 20 to maybe mid 20 pound range. So great Chinook fishing out here in Forks, great co fishing here in Forks, just all around, depends on what you wanna do. You wanna co fish, we can do that. You wanna Chinook fish, we can do that. Or we could do a combination of both, depending upon the day and what you wanna do. So come on out to Forks, join us, put some Potsky stuff to work, enjoy catching some fish, see what this is all about. Today's episode of Potsky Outdoors comes to you from the Washington coast here in the Greater Forks area. Now we're real close to Olympic National Park and we're real close to some of the best salmon fishing in all of the Pacific Northwest. As you know, you got a lot of nice cromers out of here and today we're chasing fresh Chinook salmon here on one of the many rivers in the Greater Forks area. Anybody knows the Forks area knows that there's a lot of different options, you know, within an hour of here. Endless amount of options. Now, Bob chose this one today simply because he knew there were fish around and we wanted to tangle in some simply because it was the first time we've been to Fork since February of 2011. It's not that we didn't want to come here. It's just, unfortunately, every time we've had a drip book the last couple years, we've either been blown out or it's been too low or it's been too high. Today, it was good enough for us to hop in the drift boat and drift to some of these awesome Chinooks. Now, we only filmed here for about an hour and a half today. Late in the afternoon, it wasn't the ideal time we wanted, but we spent the morning filming coho videos. And then we decided, you know what? 
instead of going home today, we don't know when we're going to be able to come back. Let's film one on Chinook. Sure enough, it's fortunate that Bob knows the river well. He knows where to go and he knows what to bring for bait. That fire cure row topped off with a few extra things like barracks of fire, fire brine, firepower. Bob doesn't mess around. He puts a nice little mix together. And sure enough, it worked. He also added a little bit of Atlas Mike scent in there. And oddly enough, sometimes they only bit it if the scent was there. Sometimes they didn't. That's why you have to come with an arsenal because you never know what these salmon are going to be eating. Now, you'll see we were able to fish today in some fantastic scenery. Anybody that's been to the Forks area knows this is just normal. It's a beautiful spot. It's one of Washington's most treasured places. And it invites you to try your luck out here on the coast and enjoy catching nice quality Chinook just like we did. Hotsky products are available at sporting goods stores near you. If you can't find the specific color, size that you want, make sure to go to potski.com. And as a thank you for watching Potski Outdoors, we're going to show you a coupon code to be used for 10% off your next order.